Hello and welcome to 7 Days. I'm Zach Yusuf here with a quick look back at some of the top stories from the last 7 days. At the top of the show, Turkey shot down a Russian warplane near the Syrian border on Tuesday, saying that the jet had violated its airspace in one of the most serious publicly acknowledged clashes between a NATO member country and Russia for half a century. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that the plane had been attacked when it was a kilometer inside of Syria and warned of serious consequences for what he termed a stab in the back administered by the accomplices of terrorists. In a letter to the UN Security Council, Turkey said that it had shot down the jet while in Turkish airspace. Along with a second plane, the aircraft had flown more than a mile into Turkey for 17 seconds despite being warned 10 times in five minutes while approaching to change direction, the letter said. The surviving crew member of the downed Russian jet said that the plane received no warnings from the Turkish Air Force and did not fly over Turkish airspace, Russian news agencies reported. Looks like that one's going to run and run. You haven't heard the last of that one, I'm sure. OK, moving along, 14 bushfires burning across southern Australia have killed two people, thousands of animals and destroyed 16 homes, as authorities said on Thursday that they feared the toll could rise. The fires, which stretch across 210 kilometres, broke out on Wednesday in heatwave conditions and quickly burnt across farmlands, forcing residents to flee and others to frantically try and save their homes and livestock. Four people were killed in a series of wildfires sparked by lightning in Western Australia state last week. Wildfires are an annual summer event in Australia, but rising temperatures have prompted some scientists to warn that climate change could increase the length and intensity of the summer fire season. The Australian Bureau of Meteorology declared October the hottest month on record. Speaking of climate change, global average temperatures in 2015 will be the warmest on record, the Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization or WMO, said at a news conference in Geneva on Wednesday. Michel Giraud made the announcement when introducing the findings of the WMO report just days before international negotiations on climate change are set to begin in Paris. Climate change has surpassed the symbolic thresholds, the WMO report warns, with global surface temperatures set to breach a 1 degree Celsius rise from pre-industrial levels reaching as high as 14.73 degrees Celsius. The previous warmest year was 2014, and the past five years are shaping up to be the hottest ever five-year period. Spurring the warming are the twin forces of human-induced climate change and a strong El Nino this year, the report said. The report also raised concerns about whether it is still possible for the world to reach the 2 degrees Celsius climate change target. World leaders from 190 countries and regions will be meeting in Paris from November the 30th to December the 11th with the goal of hammering out an agreement to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Moving along, demonstrators returned to the streets of Chicago on Wednesday evening, marching down Michigan Avenue in protest over the fatal shooting of a black teenager by a white policeman. Prosecutors announced first-degree murder charges on Tuesday against Officer Jason Van Dyke in the October 20, 2014 shooting of 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. Van Dyke shot McDonald 16 times and started shooting just six seconds after emerging from his patrol car, emptying his gun at McDonald and preparing to reload. Van Dyke's lawyer, Daniel Herbert, said on CNN that the dashboard camera video released by the city on Tuesday, some 13 months after the shooting, was not an indicator of his client's guilt. The release of the video has been controversial because it took so long and was made public only after an independent journalist filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit. The police department had argued that releasing the video would taint multiple investigations. Staying in the US, a jury found Florida man guilty of second-degree murder on Wednesday after he killed his wife and posted a photo of a blood-splattered, lifeless body on Facebook. Jurors rejected the argument that Derek Medina acted in self-defense when he shot 27-year-old Jennifer Alfonso eight times 
back in August 2013 at their Miami area residence. Medina wrote on Facebook shortly before turning himself in, stating that he would either go to prison or face a death sentence for killing his wife. He was also found guilty of shooting or throwing a deadly missile and of child neglect without bodily harm, having left his wife's minor daughter alone in the home after the shooting. Pope Francis called for ethnic and religious reconciliation on Wednesday at the start of his first tour of Africa, where he will address a fast-growing Catholic population and seek to heal Christian-Muslim divisions. The trip will see the head of the Catholic Church travelling to Kenya and Uganda, both victims of Islamic militant attacks, and the Central African Republic, a country torn apart by Muslim-Christian strife. In a speech delivered shortly after arriving in Kenya, the Pope said that it was important for everyone to work together for reconciliation and peace. The Pope was speaking at State House, the official residence of President Uhuru Kenyatta, who is a Catholic along with about 30% of Kenya's 45 million people. And finally, the first family of the United States on Wednesday served Thanksgiving dinner to homeless veterans at a church in Washington, D.C. Fresh from his visit to Malaysia for the ASEAN summit last weekend, U.S. President Barack Obama, his daughters Malia and Sasha, wife Michelle and mother-in-law Marion Robinson, served up traditional Thanksgiving food with the president dishing out turkey with one hand and pouring gravy from a ladle in the other hand. Wow, a multitasker. Anyway, the Feast with Friends dinner was put on by the Friendship Place program at St. Luke's Methodist Church in Northwest Washington, which helps homeless and at-risk veterans. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so until next time, have yourself a great week.